Hi, this is Bryn Antrim, a librarian here at Santa Monica College. And today we're going to be doing a database tour video for Academic Search and Master File Complete, two databases that are searched with one search. When you go to the school homepage, smc.edu, which may look a little different when you search it because we're going through a redesign, but the search strategy should still work, mouse over Student Support and then click on Library between Counseling and Tutoring. Once you're there, scroll down a little in the page, and you're going to be going to the Databases button because you're going to be searching in a specific database. All Databases gives you a list of all of the databases we subscribe to alphabetically by title with a short description of what's in the database. Academic Search and Master File Complete are listed first. When you click on it, if you're not yet logged in, it will require you to log in with your Canvas login. Once there, you have some options again. The first thing you want to make sure is that full text is actually clicked so you get the article and not just information about the article. You can do other refinements to your search as well, but I'm going to start with the general search and show you how to refine it down after you get some results. So if I decide that I want to take a look at social media, and I also want to look at how that interacts with body image. I search that out, see what I get. This is a relatively specific search, two specific topics, and and is where they overlap. So everything that I get in my results must include both of these topics. I come up with 213 hits. Some of them are periodicals, Databases that are published by EBSCOhost use the word periodical to mean not scholarly. It might be a newsletter, it might be a magazine, but it's not academic. I also get some academic journals. And I decide, well, my teacher really wants me to use scholarly journals. So over here on the left-hand side, I can say, give me only peer-reviewed scholarly journals. And that cuts my results about in half, but I still want to narrow it down a little bit more. So I can go down here to the publication date, and I can either move the bar, or I can type in that I want the last 10 years. That's a decent date range, 5 to 10 years for scholarly journal articles. It depends on the topic, of course. If your topic is something that changes rapidly, like medicine or technology or law, maybe the last three years. If it's something like history or philosophy or literature, where a longer um, or broader search might be quite useful, maybe you want to go back 15 years. Talk to your instructor. They're the discipline expert, and they're the ones that will let you know how far back um, that you want to go. Um, this is technology, so instead of 2000. 10, I'm only going to go back about five years and go to 2016. And when I add that limiter, see if it'll let me, yes, it cuts it in half again down to 46. I can continue, and if I would like to continue, like say I still had a couple of hundred, I could go down here to subject term, and there are two subjects. Subject thesaurus term makes your search broader because thesaurus means words that mean the same thing. So you end up getting more hits. Subject without anything else, just subject, are specifically assigned subject headings, and they narrow your subject down considerably. So if you get a lot of hits and you want to narrow it down, you can use subject to do that. But I have enough. I want to take a look at them and see what I've got. So when I look through here, I see something that looks interesting. Notice not all of them are in English. Oh, this looks quite interesting. This is in the Journal of Research on Adolescence from December of 2017. It's an 18-page journal article, um, and it might be quite useful depending on my topic. So when I click on that, it will bring up information about the article, including the research team, the title of the article, the source, which is the journal it's in, when you cite this, leave off the Wiley Blackwell, and all of the publication information. 
it will give some subject terms that will tell you in broad terms what the topics um, are covered in this article. And then it'll give you an abstract, which is the author supplied summary of what they think is important about this article. When I take a look at this abstract, I can tell by the words that are used and how it presents itself that this is primary research. So if my instructor was requiring that, this would also check that box. The article itself is over here attached as a PDF. So I could either read it online by clicking that, or I could go over here on the right hand side and I could email it to myself. When I email it to myself, I just put in my email address. It doesn't make any difference if the top one changes. I give it some kind of a subject. And over here on the right hand side, before I send it off, I ask it to give it an attempt at a citation. We are not in Brazil, so we're not using the Brazilian national standards. So you scroll down alphabetically until you get to the citation format that is required in your class. For example, in Library 1 and in English 1, we use MLA, the Modern Language Association. Never send in plain text format. That will mess up all of your graphics. And send it off. You'll get an email confirmation saying that it's been sent. Now, before you leave, you could also cite it from this page if you wanted a citation. So if I click that, again, it's alphabetical order, so it defaults to Brazil. So I scroll on down to the MLA citation, and I can copy this and paste it. Before I turn it in, I want to fix it, though. For example, it's not double-spaced. It's not in Times New Roman size 12. Um, this needs to be taken out. So what you'll want to do is, after you copy it and put it into your paper, fix it using the template given to you by your instructor. And then after you're finished with that, you can click on Result List to get back to your varied and interesting articles and pick another one. If you have questions at any time, on the library homepage, again, Student Support, click on Library, You can go to Ask a Librarian, which is 24-7 reference chat assistance. When the library is staffed with SMC librarians, in other words, normal business hours during fall, spring, winter, summer, you'll be chatting with an SMC librarian. But if we're not there, you'll still be talking to a college or university librarian from one of our partners in the consortium. This is also linked in the database along the right-hand side of your results, so you can chat while actually looking at your results and not lose your search result while you're asking for help. Good luck with your research. Be well.